Hello, welcome back to Overclock Showcase. Um, I just realized I should be in the bar because that's where I normally start these videos. Either way, welcome back to Overclock Showcase, the showcase, <laughs> the showcase, the series where I show you overclocks and I show you two ways, the two most different ways that I can conceive of using them that are, are passable on um, any difficulty, ideally. I mean, the fact is I always play Hazard 5, so they should be good enough for anything, really. Um, if you watched the end of last video, then you would know that we got Dispersed Compound, which is a balanced overclock for the Sludge Pump on Driller. And the Sludge Pump is interesting when it comes to overclocks because I think the Sludge Pump at base is just this incredible, insanely reliable weapon that feels great to pair with the, with the secondaries. Especially the Wave Cooker, so it's kind of weird that I'm actually not going to be using the Wave Cooker today. And while it also does have a decent overclock selection, I don't find its overclocks that captivating. The only exceptions I would say is probably Hydrogen, Iron Additive and Volatile Impact Mixture a little bit. Only because I really like this build that uses Volatile Impact Mixture. The Spicer Compound, however, has actually always been a mainstay of my builds. It's one I've routinely used um, just consistently because it is consistently good and reliable. Um, it's a very good balanced overclock. It's pretty simple in terms of what it does and what it what it penalizes. Um, it increases fragment count and damage, but decreases charge shot damage. I would say um, the best part about this is increasing the fragment count because what this actually results in is increased amount of puddles, but also um, I guess an increased amount of enemies that could potentially be hit by the fragments when they launch out. And I think an individual fragment kind of counts as a single. Um, like a normal shot, I think. The only difference is the damage that they deal on impact, but I think they still technically inflict the same damage over time effect. Either way, we create more puzzles and can potentially hit more enemies. Um, and I don't think, really, I don't think the charge shot damage is much of a downside. You're still going to kill every run that you touch with a charge shot. And you increase the, the fragment damage slightly. I mean, fragment damage is kind of um, a, bit, a little bit dubious, really. It goes from 4 up to 8. But you lose 24 charge damage, but you gain 6 fragments, except actually you gain, um, wait, hold on a minute. How many? Yeah, you, yeah you, obviously you gain 6. I was, about, I was going to take 4 and 6 for some reason. Yeah, you gain 6 fragments. Um, so this is why this actually, from my estimation, and certainly from my experience, personal experience, is very popular and very well paired with um, an EPC with... Uh, burning nightmare and that is definitely the case i've been through periods where i've had two builds with dispersal compound where they're both using a burning nightmare epc one of them is this version the other one actually uses energy remounting which is a clean overclock and i rely on the charge shots more this one doesn't rely on charge shots though um and i think actually that was probably more of a combustive goo mix thing which honestly i start to think about it i think i actually like combustive goo mix quite a bit i just don't like that it's limited to like one um upgrade on the epc Right, you know, it's a sludge pump overclock. You shouldn't have to take a specific secondary with a specific upgrade to get any use out of it. It's silly. Special compound does not suffer from such woes. Uh, anyway, we're going to be starting with the one that doesn't use um, burning nightmare, and instead we're actually going to be using the Sabata. And I knew that I wanted to do this. I knew that I wanted to use um, neuro corrosive catalyst, uh, neuro corrosive toxic catalyst. It's a really cool upgrade that they added in season four, which is um, season four is uh almost a year and a half ago now what the fuck um but it was a really cool thing they did in season four was reworking the sabata it's still not incredible but it's definitely much better than it was especially due to this and the um and the double shot burst fire the two round burst and also even just the buff that they gave the tranquilizer around so we're gonna be using the whole package today of sort of new stuff they added to the sabata only exception obviously being both rounds but it's not like we can use it anyway you know um Okay, so what does this mean? Um, also, do you all remember the fact that the Sabata um, before Neurocorrosive Toxic Catalyst and actually before a thing that it had before that, it had an upgrade that just made it do more damage to Maxera? <laughs> and then like, that was it. It was the only example of something like that in the game. And then they changed it to um, an upgrade that gave like plus two corrosive type damage, which technically gave the same damage bonus against Maxera. So it was actually not a bad way of... Um, of reintroducing that upgrade. Neuro Corrosive Toxic Catalyst though kind of takes the cake. Anyway, um, the Sludge Pump itself. So this one is more so built around fragments than puddles, which sounds kind of weird because 
they are essentially the same thing. Um, but the big difference here is actually the tier 1 upgrade, believe it or not. Um, which is the difference between projectile speed, or you know, projectile velocity, and um, magazine size. Now, projectile velocity on the slash pump is a bit of a dubious and kind of cool aspect of it. It can be affected by both this and, of course, the AG mixture um, overclock, which I actually... That's actually one I do like. So I do like sludge pumps overclocks. I just find it... I think I just find it's unstable overclocks quite underwhelming. Um, either way. So what, what happens when you increase projectile speed in the sludge pump? Well, yeah, obviously it affects the normal shot that you shoot. Unsurprisingly, it also affects the how fast the charge shot itself moves. But what it also does is affect the velocity at which charge shot fragments are shot out from the point of impact. And that's important because that creates a wider spread of those fragments, right? Which can potentially allow you to affect a larger area. Um, and that's actually it. A larger area, therefore affecting more enemies. And the reason why I'm going to be using it on this build specifically is because it kind of just benefits the way we're using the Sabata a little bit more. Just to have a bit more coverage. You know, The other build benefits more from denser um, puddles, right? And you'll see that in action with that build. But this one, we get a little bit more benefit from being able to snipe things more so with the sludge pump. You know, uh, the way we're going to be taking down hate, like high value targets is very much so complemented by the fact that we can reliably hit things at range with the sludge pump as well. So normal shots definitely do come into this more than they do on the other build as well. But that's something to keep in mind. Um, so that's why we take um, that in tier one. Tier two is a wash. It's always going to be atomizing nozzle. In fact, I probably use this on most sludge pump builds. Actually, no, it's probably not true. But it is, very, but it is very much so a dispersal compound um, thing. It's definitely what you want for dispersal compound. I would say probably what you want from combustive gumix as well, um, and gumix special. And okay, maybe maybe the sub is kind of skewed towards wanting this. But what this does increases our fragment count even further, from um, fourteen to eighteen. So quite a lot, um, quite a lot more enemies potentially hit, a lot more ground covered, especially from a higher velocity in tier one. Um, this is something that's going to be across both builds. Another thing that's across both builds is actually the next two upgrades. Um, more ammo. Why more ammo? Well, uh, Sludge Pump is an extremely ammo efficient weapon. At the same time, it's also not because of how good it is against enemies that it can kill with one instance of the status effect, right? Which is usually just grunts. But it's so efficient against them that you start to become very inefficient when you look, don't have when you're missing 40 ammo um but you're still you know you're not any better against grunts than you were before you're not any better against the majority of enemies right so you can absolutely get by with not taking extra ammo but i do very much so recommend it and i don't personally find any benefits to taking um increased uh, super saturation Except on like a hydrogen iron additive build where you are very, very concerned with that specifically. And you're somehow mostly using the sludge pump against larger enemies with normal shots. It's quite abstract, but that's really the only situation where I can see using it. It, do it does make sense for the dispersal compound though. I want to point that out. I would understand if you wanted to use upgrade because... It increases the puddle lifespan more than it increases the actual direct hit status effect duration. And puddle lifespan is just a bit more conducive to what dispersal compound is doing, which is producing lots of puddles. So I would understand it personally. I don't think you'd be stupid for using it. Um, I personally just don't find any real benefit. So just keep that in mind. Tier 4, I think, is the same across both. I'm just going to make sure of that. Um, it is, okay. Which, I, which wasn't the case at first, because one of them did actually use um, this upgrade instead. Which meant that I wanted cheaper charge shots. But this is also another reason why we take the ammo in tier 3. Is so that we can take this upgrade in tier 4. Because the charge speed is so much better than charge efficiency. Or ammo consumption, right? Being, being able to get off those charge shots essentially instantly. Completely changes how the weapon feels, right? It actually takes it from being a fairly sluggish weapon. To being an extremely powerful and responsive weapon. It's a really impressively responsive weapon for how powerful an individual charge shot is. It's um, a really strong upgrade, and it's why we take the um, ammo in tier 4, tier 3 as well. Tier 5 is different across the two builds. We're taking um, damage over time here because we lean a little bit, a little bit more towards damage over time. Or rather, 
keeping enemies in the puddles is not um, as much of a concern. And that's really it. You would still definitely get a lot of good use out of um, protein disruption mix. And in general, I think it complements dispersal compound very well. And that's why we're using it on the other build. So you'll see that in action later. But for now, we do want to get a little bit more out of damage over time. Um, so it just, for me, fluoro, fluoro antimonic acid feels a little bit more um, sensible. Now, the Spartan. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. Basically, it's just built to be able to inflict... Um, it's built to be able to inflict stun and stacks of neurocorrosive toxic catalyst um, with really, like, just a extreme efficiency, right? And we get that through magazine sides. We get that if we're taking as much ammo as possible. The two-round burst complements tranquilizer rounds wonderfully. Tranquilizer rounds is a really, actually, in my opinion, really cool overclock for the Sabata. Um, stun by itself does not come across as very impressive. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. But it's a 50% chance to stun. And I think it's a 6 second stun? Or 8 second? It's like the longest stun in the game. I think it's still tied with something, but it is technically the longest stun in the game. Um, and it also can slow any type of enemy, which, you know, it's additive to the slowdown that we cause with the Sludge Bump anyway. Which is why I don't feel too bad about not taking Protein Disruption Mix. Um, and because it's a 50% chance to proc, um, taking two round burst is perfect because all, and I know it doesn't equal 100% chance I know 50% doesn't mean it's 100% chance to activate it into shots but it's still very high you're almost always going to be activating the stun with that two round burst so it's really great against things like Mactera and Atis Bitters you'll definitely be seeing that it's also a cool aspect of um, two round burst where the second shot if it hits the same enemy it actually has like armor breaking which is great against something like um Praetorians and Brundles and even honestly even Shellbacks right and it's all just help it's also helped by um Sludge Pump stripping ammo by itself anyway quite well um but also not perfectly because the Sludge Pump used to have an upgrade in tier 5 called Ingredient X that made it um, remove armor really quickly but basically what they did they actually added added it to the base weapon but nerfed it as well so the Sludge Pump can is good at destroying armor no matter what but not quite as good as it was if you would have had ingredient X, which you can no longer have. So I don't mind having it with extra armor breaking. Um, and Neurocorrosive Toxic Catalyst is there for a couple reasons. It's mainly actually for damage over time against single targets. This is actually kind of our single target option, which I think is kind of cool. Um, which is why we are, well, we're actually not doing elimination. I don't think the Suppressor Compound is really built for eliminations either way. The way that it would be would be, I would say, with like a slur, blah, 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 blah. A wave cooker build, like a wave cooker um, status effect stacking build, I would say, is the way that you would go with that. Um, but Neurocorrosive Toxic Catalyst is still a really cool way of achieving strong damage over time against single targets, but also it has the explosion effect, which is definitely useful when you're fighting sort of denser groups of like non grunts, basically. It, it's really good for things like guards and, and that kind of thing. So you'll definitely see that as well. But either way, I think I've spent a while on here. Impact Axes. Is it a surprise, really? No. Anyway, let's get started. So we're starting with a um, salvage operation because I find it just to be a nice way to show off things that uh, have a bit of a, like a slowdown and crowd control focus. Um, it just, you know, suffice to say, salvage op is up there. I actually like, really like it. And I know that's not, I don't think it's a particularly a popular opinion. I think it tends to rank fairly low down. A little bit actually. Um, yeah, I think it tends to rank fairly low in people's lists, but I don't know, man. I like it. I really like the flow. I really like the way the caves are laid out. It always feels like approachable for some reason. Even if those final sort of um, stages of the mission can easily go to shit. Um, I don't think that's going to happen today, though. Um, anyway, <coughs> I think I've already given a pretty good rundown of the builds, uh, or the first build at least, and already kind of given my thoughts on dispersal compound anyway. I think. Um, all that being said, best if I just skip to the first bit of combat, I reckon. So, see you then. Okay, so the first thing I did is actually, well, we'll see what's in the room itself, some grunts here. There's actually this, um, Gale Brandal, of which there is more than one, sort of pulls down over there. But yeah, so this kind of thing, well, we might use, um, bar for a bit, but we can mostly rely on the sludge pump to do groups of grunts. Are really not something you need to worry about. 
Anyway, is this scale bramble? I think I can probably handle it. I don't know if, um, I don't know if terror is, I think we can kill Mactera spawn in one shot, actually. I think. I know we can do grunts, obviously. I mean, look at that. Easy. Easy stuff. Let's see if I'm actually um, playing the game today. I think a tactical retreat. I simply die from the <laughs> And I was a lot closer to that scale brand below it than I would have liked to have been. Right, that should kill them. Um, right, there's some sugar. Yeah, to be honest, I'm, I have been a bit rusty recently. I haven't been able to play as much as I want to prepare for this because I've just had I've just had work to do. Really fucking brutal coding work um, for uh, university, and this is for an assignment. This isn't like just casual homework or classwork, which we do have. We got class exercises that are assessed, and that's like, that is part of our assessment. But it's an actual assignment, and it's really fucking brutal. It's just been it's been swamping my evenings basically. Wait, hold on. Is there actually I think there might be three scale brambles. Hold on. Oscar, can you just go and get that? These were like um, lethal, aggressive enemies. I would, I would be dead fine. God, that—that's um, part of it. Yeah. So obviously, we took the increased velocity to help with ranged combat, but this is the kind of range that. Sludge Bump is never going to, be, going to be good for unless you've got AG mixture. The benefit of the damage over time. See, I just shot that scale bramble when it when it hit with the sludge pump. Hit it with the two round burst from the Sabata. That was enough to kill it. I didn't need to think about it after that. That goes for a couple of high value targets like like scale brambles, at spitters, tri jaws, that kind of thing. I think it's probably it's not a very long list. I think spreaders as well. Although that might be more so like uh, that might take more than two bullets. Cool. That spitballer. Oh, that's a different spitball, actually. That wasn't the one I was thinking of. Nice. Go! Get to work! Feeling much better now. But can I actually hit those? Yeah, I thought that's how that was going to go. <laughs> I guess I will have to get Vodka to do that. Alright. I'm gonna work my way up towards that thing. This is spitball first. Let's Whoa! Okay, I don't... Yeah, I guess that was actually the... the... Gale Bramble. Oh well. I, I, I like how it's complimenting Savage up by having like really like nice cave layouts and we just get hit with like the, the big huge high ceiling scale bramble. Oh, okay, cool. But clearly I need to take that thing out. This is the kind of thing where um gamma contamination slug uh, wave cooker I keep thinking this the wave cooker is a sludge pump. But gamma contamination wave cooker would be really good against these things. 
I think one instant for the status effect is definitely enough for it. What's that all about? <laughs> Nonsense. Alright. I mean, I, get, I can see myself getting hit by a pressure wave any moment now, but I think... Actually, I guess we can see... Well, there, there it is. But we do need to kind of talk about what's going on here. Um, I think you've definitely seen how it handles uh, groups of enemies right now. Which is why this one is getting a battle charge. Um, groups running very well, sort of pick out things that aren't just grunt, like anything that's above a grunt, like a slasher, shoot it with, um, <coughs> Sparta, and it should help, you know, kill that thing that will probably outlive the main attack, and also help deal with the Hawk more quickly as well. Um, this Praetorian, for example, should be a pretty simple deal. That should kill it. So that's eight bullets in total from the, the Barter. And a charge shot and then a single shot from the sludge pump. You could probably do it in like two or three normal shots if you wanted, but I like using the charge shots against Praetorians for some reason, which is definitely what you will like definitely be doing the next build. That's much more part of that actually, using uh, full charge shots against single targets. Um, but yeah, if I think I definitely do some mission stuff, I'll get back to you. Well, I'm sure I'll, I'll get some enemies to kill when I um, build the mules. But for now, I've got work to do. Bomber. Oh shit, it's actually it's more than just a good bomber. <laughs> actually, not really. Exploders. Mine. Nice. Anyway, we're at that um, time of year where, I guess in all places where it is, like, this time of year, relatively, um, where it just starts getting dark at 3pm. So I think within, like, I mean, look, by the end of this video, it will be dark. I, I guarantee it. Oh, so I did notice that cable. There. Where is it? There it is. Get out of here. Why are you so shy? <laughs> Let's go kill it. Could need a new canister. Getting tired of this Nothing I actually really like about um, this, and it is somewhat specific to the dispersal compound. Like, it's a really nice thing about when you have a situation where you have a flying enemy, like a brundle especially. I don't know why it feels better with brundles. A flying enemy flying over a group of enemies. It feels good to basically use them. It's like that um, bow from Terraria. The one that's like really good against flying enemies, but like when you shoot a flying enemy with it, it makes the the, like the arrows that split out of it. It's actually from the um, the dungeon defenders cross type of stuff. It's from Betsy, and it like basically makes arrows Betsy from two area dungeon defenders, not deep rock. Um, but it makes the arrows that come out of it like come out from the bottom. It's like almost like flak basically, I, I guess. Um, it's like some it's meant to be like an airburst thing, and that's kind of the effect that you get here as well. Um, I really like it for some reason. Obviously, it is somewhat specific to Dispersal Compound because there's more fragments of Dispersal Compound. I'm not sure I feel about the majority of the enemies being shockers and explodes. Things with damage over time this just has like no bearing. And the thing is, typically grunt, even grunts don't just die to the puddles alone, which is where the Sabata comes in as well. Another aspect of why Sabata, ne with Neurotoxic Catalyst, neuro Neurocrosive Toxic Catalyst, what is that? NC, NCTC. It's, well, it's nothing that makes it really useful. Hmm. 
I mean, that's that, what you just saw, that's the kind of stuff I really like in this game. You have to talk these little combos that aren't like immediate, just, just mass destruction, but they still are like really like, it's like neat and efficient. You know, just like a couple shots here, a couple shots there of the other thing. And the enemy dies in like a good amount of time. I, I like that kind of thing for some reason. Um, I mean, for some reason, it, I can see, <laughs> it's not hard to see why it's nice. But I think as long as there aren't any enemies showing up, I'm going to take some time to repair this old rust bucket. I'll see you in a minute. All right, I was wrong. There are enemies. I'm not wrong. I'm going to create a bit of a killing box. to the puddle there we go all right i mean you could probably deal with a group of grunts just by firing off two charge shots but i kind of wanted to be and i did but directly at them and i, I wanted to just be more fancy than that but i'd say this is about to it can be used in those situations but it is a bit more of a single target like high value target killer than it is a group killer which is kind of weird given that right given that it has this explosive sort of um, uh, component to it that you would expect to be good for crowd clearing. Um, but I don't think that's really where its strengths lie. You know, unlike um, Neurotherm or Necrothermal Catalyst on the coil gun, which is still pretty good single target, and I do use it for that sometimes, but it's clearly more skewered towards the AoE aspect. The explosion that it produces is quite substantial, unlike Neurocrosive Toxic Catalyst. Um, Yes. All right. Well, that group of grunts up there probably aren't going to be an issue. I'm going to focus on getting that final mule repaired. Look at them, crawling, creeping, dying. Molly, please don't push me off. No. Oh. oh. Ah! <laughs> oh, a bomber! Wait, there's more in there. There's more than the bomber. Not much more. To remove the um the self damage from the sludge pump. I'm not sure if they have or not. Lovely. <laughs> I've actually been overusing the sludge pump. I, I usually with this I actually run out of um, ammo and sabata first, but and that, I don't think that's because the Sparta has too much ammo. Although, you probably could excuse taking one of the damage mods, to be honest. I don't think that would be stupid. Anyway, we got a core stone to kill. Which is actually something that we're quite good against with this build. Um, we're actually pretty good against core spawn, and we kind of get that flak, or sorry, that airburst effect from if we were to shoot the core stone itself. I will probably just be using um, satchels on the core stone itself, however, but I might still do that. And that's the thing, as Drillo, we can, you know, it's quite easy to take down. No matter what the build is, but hopefully you'll still see some good combat against a core spawn. Speaking of core, well, I can't really talk, well, I can talk about the core spawn concept art. Like of the new the new ones, but obviously I can't show it, or at least I don't think I could show it. That's kind of a weird thing I've put upon myself, but I'm, I'm just waiting till I have permission, basically. Oh, that's actually quite a lot of core spawn. Right, I'm going to start air bursting, actually.
There you go. Oh, there, is, there they are. Look at these idiots. I'm gonna impact axe these idiots. Lovely. Bum 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 bum. Where are they? Come on, lads. Make this difficult for me. I didn't want to waste time with that fucking bit. I mean, can you blame me? Alright, let's get that thing in the pod. Of course, don't collect from pod. And I'll see, I think I'll see you when we start to do the uplink. I don't think you need to do Even if I get a fresh wave in between now and then, I don't think you need to do it really. Alright, fuck it, it's like a good horde. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Yeah, man. Very nice. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't even know if I need to comment what's happening because you can just see where its strengths lie so strongly. And something that obviously would normally not be a strength of the sludge pump, which is like things, high value targets, things that sort of keep their distance. Scale Bramble accepted. The things like the Macteras. Stuff like that, and then be able to finish them off so neatly with a uh, Sabata. I think you can see how that feels really good, and that doesn't really have anything to do with uh, the uh, dispersor compound. But I think the way that we're handling large groups of enemies definitely does. Well, it's just way more puddles spread out over long longer distances for enemies to walk into, and then for us to shoot with the Sabata to sort of turn them into basically explosives. Um, I think it works out really neatly. I will say this is this build is the less energistic one out of the two actually. The next build is much more of a much more dispersive compound specific, I would say. Um, this is the kind of thing that you could kind of achieve with a lot of um, dodge pump overclocks, to be honest. But I still think it feels really good with dispersive compound. Unless there's an oppressor. Oppressors are not particularly fun with this. Although I do have a pickaxe power attack damage, which makes short work for presses. Hmm. Oh yeah, that the um, pump self damage is definitely still there. <laughs> That was a rogue, rogue exploder, not build specific. Hmm. Though we're definitely getting a nice airburst effect there from the U bomber, the ice bomber, I suppose. Boss bomber. Yeah, apart from the rogue exploded killing me, I think you can see how sort of um, the area coverage that we get from the Spursal Compound combined with the disruption popping power of the Sabata, it's a really nice combo. Um, in a situation like this, you'll get the same effect definitely on the escort duty, um, a lot of different like contexts and things like does with sabotage when defending um, the hacking pods, and just I guess a lot, lot, lot of events as well. I don't know about um, I don't know about. Deep scans much. I literally forgot its name for a moment. Um, but it can still work, especially with the airburst aspect. But obviously, the only problem is, is that the, the sludge puddles, fragments uh, dissipate when they hit the ground of the, uh, the drill elevator. I 
Yeah. I have to turn the brightness up on my camera. Or the exposure, rather. There we go. The, it's half free, which means it gets dark. Alright. End of the line. Well, I don't know exactly what mission I'm going to do for the uh, the next build, because Salvage Drop is kind of the best. Well, maybe mine is like. Might be the best mission for this, to be honest. Um, this overclock. I don't know what I'm going to do. I could actually technically do something with rivals. I don't want to do industrial sabotage because it's just not really good. To be honest, the only good sludge pump build for industrial sabotage is actually sludge blast. Much it, I, it pains me to say that. Um, Great, boy, needed that. Right, let's get it. Right, let's get it. So, number of charging. Ooh. Stay close to keep them operational. We're expecting an increase in hostiles. Hi. Sorry about that, I got called away for manual labour. I'm just thinking about how much you're going to get these um, coding exercises done. I know you don't want to hear about it, but look, I'm not going to pause the recording right now. Um, it's like JavaScript slash HTML stuff, so it's like coding websites with like an encoding functionality into them with JavaScript. Um, it's tough, man. It's tough because I'm so often just floundering for the actual syntax of what I need, like, the actual wording of the code I need to put in. I, I generally have an idea of where, like, what direction to go in to get the desired result, but I just don't have the, the, the actual means to like, implement it. Um, it's really, it's really frustrating, and I don't have, like, you know, I don't, I mean, I've, I'm quite ahead of the curve, I'm definitely not leaving it last minute, but I don't have infinite time even. Burst with, with the fuel cell constantly. Okay, right, I'm going to take a resupply just for health reasons. Also, I hope everyone in America is doing okay. <laughs> Well, I hope everyone who didn't vote for a, a criminal in the UK. I don't want. I don't. Sorry, forget. Actually, that's kind of. It's also going to date the video. I don't really want to do that. And I don't feel that strongly about it. So I apologise. Ever made a nice South African? That's not. I don't know if that was going to be demonetized or not. No, that song is like not available on YouTube at all. Come on. Almost now. Day and night. Lonely Bono seems to free his slime at night. What? What? Alright, let's go. <laughs> okay, so that was the first mission. Special compound build number one. Um, what can I say except this is just a really effective crowd clearing um, tool and with a good amount of crowd control mixed in as well, especially if you take a secondary that has that stop stopping power. <clears throat> Feels really good. There's nothing that you're really weak against. I would say the only thing that we encountered where we were sort of a little bit um, kind of 
bought um, pants down was um, because the room was so big. So like it gets really big rooms with ranged enemies in them are a problem. Um, which you don't encounter too often, but it's still it's still a problem. And it's not going to get any better with the next build. It's the kind of thing that's really only alleviated by either AG mixture or a strong hit scan secondary. And that's usually either going to be um, a Sabata with explosive reload or just a, a general, quite a few wave quicker builds. Anyway, next build. Also, I, I really wish I got, could get to do that mission, but it's just not like for the other build at all. Not going to work in Threadnoughts. Um, which is why I don't really know. Actually, you know what? Oh god, there's too many double XP's. At least I get to do one. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure this mission is... Oh, okay, this is the current week, actually. Oh, it's swapped. Oh! That's kind of cool. So I, I, I previously had them... Last week's weekly core hunt selected. Also, this image. This background image. That's old. Like, that's really old. Anyway, um... I previously had the previous week's weekly core hunt selected. I hadn't made any progress on it. And usually it kind of just ticks over, I think, and sort of just shows, like, a negative deadline. Um, but it actually just replaced it with the current one, which is actually kind of cool. So, yeah, at least I get to do, um, I get to do this, and I think... Let's just leave it like that. Um, but yeah, the other build. So, um, so let's quickly go through the, the large jump differences. Um, actually, it makes more sense to go through this first. There's an EPC with heavy hit... Oh! Okay, before I was rudely interrupted by someone who <laughs> thinks I'm streaming. Um, anyway, so this is a Burning Nightmare Heavy Hitter EPC build, which is probably... Yeah, I'd say my favourite way to use the EPC. Heavy Hitter's just kind of cool. Um, you could definitely use it with Cryo if you want, but I think using it for Burning Nightmare um, for Sludge Pump is probably the better way to do it. Damage in Tier 1. Um, mainly just because it lets you set things on fire so much easier. I think it's actually the difference between... Um, setting puddles on in two shots setting puddles on fire in two shots um and then like not like more than two shots <laughs> basically um and that is the crux of this is setting puddles on fire which is why you at least get to take um ammo in tier four um tier three is easy it's just the thing that reduces heating uh, from normal shots tier two projectile speed important for a lot of reasons um trivial but also useful reaching puddles before enemies walk over them um, more tangible is just hitting enemies at longer distances, basically. Um, so yeah, and then ammo, it's, it's all kind of just basic stuff to sort of create like a, the best way to use the EPC for setting things on fire with normal shots, basically. And then the sludge pump differences mainly kick in with the magazine capacity because this gives us a bit more ammo. Yes, it does, and that's pretty cool. But mainly it um, creates denser puddles. Um, because the, the puddles don't get the fragments don't get shot out as far, therefore we get denser puddles which are more likely to catch each other on fire, creating just denser pools of fire which just increases damage and prolonged damage as well. Um, protein disruption mix is in there as well because setting them on fire doesn't make them slow enemies down anymore, it just makes them do more damage. So protein disruption mix is actually a very appropriate take uh, for this version of things. Yeah, this is very much so about uh, combining fire with sludge on the ground. We will be doing the same with um, enemies that are just, you know, normal enemies, right? You sludge an enemy, then you set it on fire. That's definitely how you deal with certain high-value targets. But it's not a direct combination. Uh, the direct combo is the fact that we are literally setting the sludge on fire, which we'll use for both, for pretty much all contexts. Maybe just completely basic grunt hordes, you kind of want to avoid it because it's a bit of a waste of ammo. But anything stronger than that, and definitely for single targets, things like uh, Praetorians and, and Stronger, yes. Um, so yeah, it's just a really nice combination, and I think the Spursal Compound actually feeds into it directly. Um, unlike the previous build, which is a little bit more ambiguous. Anyway, let's get into it. <coughs> because I don't like these videos really going over an hour, but they kind of just are at the moment. I guess the, um, the podcast minimum could also potentially be these videos maximum, which is an hour and 15 minutes. Quarter. I also could cut out loading screen. Help with that. Force stone. That's fine, actually. 
that might do it. No. The more core spawn we kill, the better trained will be for road call. But yeah, the, the, the funniest thing about this is just the difference that occurs between how you play when you've just been using the high velocity version of the Sludge Pump and then switch, switch to just normal. Normal fall off, basically. It's quite uh, drastic. Anyway, looks like it's going to be a fairly um, blasted opening to this mission, so I'll see you when we got something to kill. I keep it simple. The first enemy to be fighting this mission is a swarm. I would say it actually isn't the worst. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't know how I can call this a good environment. Um. Oh dear. Contact. Lock and load. Oh dear. Oh, they'll die. And that was actually Mactera getting affected by puddles. Anyway, this is the room we've got to be in, I think. Even with this wind tunnel. <laughs> Probably gonna fuck me over, but... Alas. So things like Mactera, actually. Uh, HBTs are actually kind of exempt from the sludge pump being used against them, actually. It's kind of just use the EPC by itself. Um, which is nice. Keeps things simple. And that, what that results in is probably more slug pump spam. But what you can do, because we're going to spam slug pump so much, you only need to set the slug pump fire one to sort of prolong that across the fire swarm. Especially if it's in a dense, like, compact environment like this. So you can kind of just keep the flames going. I thought they were like definitely more. And yes, by the way, that was um, Burning Nightmare adding a small fire AOE to the EP shots that can one shot swarmers. Actually, actually, really useful to know that. Um, yeah, honestly, I probably went a bit overkill with um, the amount of sludge of ammo I used, but we got through it fine without using like, like you know even close to half our ammo, so I think that's a sign of an effective build, to be honest. I can't really, you know, ignore that. I feel like I really used my grenades or sat for either. I mean, I... I really is my least favourite class, but he is damn strong. And that's true, Drillit is my least favourite The more I play, the more I realise that's the case. I don't like him any less, I just really, like, I don't like him less as time goes on, but I realise um, how much like how much so he is um, my least liked still. If that makes any sense. That an omen was that just explosive. You set them on fire so easily. You see, this guy, we're not going to hit him with a sludge fast, let's be honest, sludge pump. So, it's going to be an EPC job as much as possible, unless he gets close enough, which means you definitely do want to sludge him, because that just makes him more efficient. See, so actually hitting the weak points, though, is very good as well. So ideally, I would be hitting the weak spots, but with the EPC, even with the higher velocity, it's difficult. And I find the menace weak spots a little bit finicky anyway, so... What I really want is just a, um... Just a Praetorian. You don't actually have to... You don't have to kill Sneak Tails this way, by the way. 
you can definitely do it more simply. I'm about to get. Oh yeah, that's that's cool. Actually, the big contrast here to where we were fighting the swarm, being in an open room affects this a lot more because when it's very much so just open ground, all the sludge just kind of just ends up in one place, which is actually one of the downsides to um, using uh, or not using the velocity, like high velocity sludge. Easy way of killing Tim Tail. Alright, I'm just gonna scrounge. You know what? I just want to talk about the build a bit. Um, so, aside from that sort of weakness I just mentioned, they were still very effective at just killing large groups of enemies, especially dense groups of enemies, but also single targets within them go down pretty easily. When you get sort of tougher enemies mixed in with the horde, they're nowhere near as much of a problem with this build than they are with the other one. Um, and we also just have a very powerful and reliable secondary anyway. And a very spammable primary. So it's just a very basic, but also very basic but synergistic build, I'd, I'd say. Um, no real weaknesses. I would say grouped ranged enemies that are far away from you could be considered a weakness. Come back this way. I feel like it. In Barrage Infectors, they're kind of icky. I don't like them very much. I mean, uh, you're not meant to, but still. Right, is this going to be a resupply? I think it will. Alright, I'm going to prepare for this um, core stone. Uh, I've got another swarm. Hold on. I guess I can't use the sound to charge during this. Oh my god, that was a proper one. Wow. Oh shit, the cost of started. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, I just, I literally, throwing that satchel made me realize why. Um, it's because it's got Dead Man Switch, or whatever it's called. Um, or, no, sorry, Volatile Compound. Meaning that um, it, can, it will blow up if it gets like hit by anything, basically. They're crawler maxing, doing the thing where you know, even though you are faster than them, actually, no, I guess you're not faster. Um, I shouldn't lie. Oh, 
Especially after dying, this is definitely one of those moments where you want to knock him. <laughs> the sludge is actually a lot better than it's called one of the four. Fairly well, actually. Um, and I, I honestly, I yeah, I'm at, I'm kind of at that point. I actually don't know what to say about the build itself because I think it's just fairly self-explanatory. I think especially the aspect of them killing sort of um tougher enemies that just are kind of just mixing in with the horde because you're setting such on fire. But I think I did say before we started that when we actually we should be setting the sludge on fire like all the time. But I think I also said that. You only really don't when it's actually just grunts. And I mean just grunts, so if there's even like slashes, you might as well set it on fire. Presses though are definitely the worst because they don't inherently they don't have a weakness to sludge and they have a kind of resistance to fire, so But we can still have them. By doing that, <laughs> which makes me really wish that the sludge pump uh, effect stack, but we don't live in an ideal world. And do something about this camera. Alright, it's kind of the best I can do about looking terrifying. Um, I think we got to move on. I can't imagine there's more more kind in this room. Um. But yeah, hopefully you can see how this build is pretty decent. It's definitely, this is also the one that's been more of a mainstay of my sort of um, just loadouts for a long time. I've, I've always kind of liked it. I've always liked setting the sludge on fire in sort of dense, like big puddles. It's always felt pretty good. Um, yeah, also I can tell the stalker about, but I think I'm still just going to you know, skip. I don't think it's actually really... A Group event is it just literally just these guys? Looks like it. <laughs> wow. Well, so that stalker is getting nearer and nearer, but doesn't actually seem to want to attack. I don't know what's going on with that. One shot? It does. Oh, now this one I wanted to do earlier. I wanted to actually put sludge near the large infector. I don't have that. Oh, I'm not doing it right at all. Oh, I'm gonna die. But yeah, I wanted to put sludge basically be next to it and therefore affecting it just as much as it would be if it was below it. But it looks like it's not really an easy thing to do. <laughs> or maybe it's not even possible to. Be Literally just grunts. Perfect. No fire. It looks like puddles do kill them. That's good to know. So, um, by the way, uh, obviously, having to adjust the lighting so much is dark. It's 4 p.m. I love winter. The annoying thing is I actually do love Winter, and I've been singing its praises amongst like my peers for ages. Um, but I don't like the light aspect. Of it. I don't. I like the temperature. I actually do. I like the general type of weather that I get. But grunts, lots of them. There's nothing better than grunts, lots of them. What would be better is a grunt apocalypse warning. 
Honestly, uh, uh, you could even it could be an anomaly. The Glyphic Grunts are here. Let's show them our special handshake team. Do, 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 do. Right. Definitely want to find the sort of uh, the... You can at least see, because obviously in, in more open environments, obviously the, the sludge is a little bit weaker because it doesn't spread out as much. Can't really hit that many enemies with a single um, charge shot. But if you can see how the puzzles being close together does mean they set each other on fire. Uh, whereas it, it's more difficult for that to occur than when the, 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 the fragments kind of launch out at like a high velocity and end up far away from each other. It complements, um, even though like it's kind of a weird thing that I almost kind of don't like. It does benefit the burning nightmare aspect of it, like the fire aspect, greatly. I don't think puddles um, work through heat propagation. I don't think they get set on fire by heat that burning enemies produce. If they did, that would actually change things a bit. does happen. Well, there you go. That's news to me, and that's probably news to at least a couple of you. Um... I kind of think I would, have, I would have almost expected myself to have known, because I'm such a nerd when it comes to this specific aspect of the OG. Um, I just really like that, that weird sort of granular... Mechanics, like, those mechanics that clearly aren't that well thought out, you know? I can hit this flea. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. I think it's time for another cut, don't you? I'm in danger. Not for long. Oh, a warden. Hi. Yeah, a warden's the kind of thing that you don't want to pop with, like, um, putting stuff underneath them. See it on fire? Like, their weak point is so juicy. You've just got to go for it. Anyway, this is definitely the final room. So... Get Bosco to mop up that... More tired. God, my eyes are tired. I'm not tired, but my eyes are tired. I get that a lot. My eyes are more tired than my, my body. Um, I mean, it probably has something to do with screens, to be honest. What kind of fiendish technology makes Molly constantly get in the I mean, I definitely want to get out of here before it warm does. Yeah, I mean, I don't need anything. I don't need nitro. What am I saying? All quarters met. Well done, team. Activate your transponder via the mule and get back home. Drop pod en route. Hang in there. Ready to kill some more. All right, well, that was dispersal compound. Um, I hope you saw what it's just a generally very reliable, solid way to use the sludge pump. It's almost the kind of thing where I don't even know if I'll call it a straight up upgrade to the sludge pump. It's just a kind of neat alteration, just focusing on the on the, on the charge shot fragments, um, 
as a mechanic is just kind of neat, but it's also not super unique. So it's like, it. I wouldn't call it a clean necessarily, but it's very just analogous to base sludge pump. Which means most things that are good with base sludge pump are going to be good with this, but there are still things that I think are specific. So that's kind of the two builds almost. This one is the more specific one to um, Versa Compound. The other one is more just analogous to, would we'll probably work with just about any sludge pump build. Um, I think that's an interesting dichotomy. What is going on here? Okay. I think it promotes sort of fairly interesting use of um, plus pumps modifications. That's a sting tail. This idiot. Watch him burn. This formation's kind of you know, like teeth. Yeah, it doesn't mean teeth, does it? Airburst. Airburst. Which is always a fair way to use a sludge bump, is beating at the ceiling or something high up, basically. Um, anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this um, episode of Overclock Showcase. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and see more videos like this. Then also, please make sure to um, click the bell. Oh, and obviously, if you want to stay on top of everything to do with Deep Rock and Road Call, obviously, click the bell. But now, it's time to find out what our next Overclock will be. And um, if you haven't watched this part of one of these episodes before, um, let me quickly explain. Basically, I use a, a Wheel of Fortune um, where I put in um, basically the numbers of the overclocks of the next weapon. In this case, it's going to be the Drac, which is whew, a goat. Um, very happy about that. Let's do a Drac overclock. Honestly, kind of even if it's that disastrously boring clean one, because I truly never use it. So being given a reason to is not a bad thing. Anyway, so just to very quickly... Not demonstrate, but just to exemplify how this works. So we basically have the overclocks here numbered from 1 to however many. Here it's 1 to 8 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Given that we've already done conductive thermals, that means number 2 is not in the wheel. So I'm going to show you the wheel right now. That is JD Vance being made fun of, I think. I told you this wasn't meant to be political. Um, oh dear. Anyway, here's the wheel. Um... Number seven, it's got the fucking South African song. Um, because I always just change the background each time. Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. It's number one. And number one, if you're paying attention, is impact deflection, which is amazing. I love impact deflection. I'm very happy with that result. Is it? Oh, there it is. So I know I'm going to be using this. Um, slot at the very least. Well, I think that you should actually be shaped shells. Does jumbo shells make more sense? Maybe it does? I'm not sure. Either way, impact deflection is a great one. I know I'm going to enjoy that probably more than most of the ones we've done so far. Either way, that's the end of the video. Let's go get drunk. Um, and I'll see you. We'll see you on Saturday for something. I'm not going to say what exactly. Um... It's frankly, I'm not sure. It could have been something quite boring <laughs> that I know Tyler would enjoy. But it also could have just been a tier list. I'm not sure. Anyway, look, I'm also look forward to next week when we get to um, the On the Horizon stream. That's going to be something. Anyway, that's all this week. Goodbye.